we want to find the critical numbers, the intervals for which the function is increasing or decreasing, and the location of any relative or local extrema. Notice how here we're given a degree five polynomial function. So to find the critical numbers, we want to determine where the first derivative is equal to zero or undefined. So let's first find f prime of x, which is equal to the derivative of x to the fifth, which would be five x to the fourth, plus the derivative of five x to the fourth, that would be twenty x to the third, minus the derivative of five x to the third, that'd be fifteen x squared, and the derivative of four would be zero. Notice how our derivative function is another polynomial function, so it's never undefined, so the critical numbers will occur where this first derivative is equal to zero. So let's first factor out the greatest common factor, which would be five x squared, and we're left with x squared plus four x minus three. Unfortunately, this quadratic here does not factor, and therefore, the critical numbers occur when five x squared equals zero, or when x squared plus four x minus three equals zero. Well, here if we solve for x, we'll just get x equals zero, but in order to solve this quadratic equation, we'll have to use the quadratic formula, where a is equal to one, b equals four and c equals negative three. So our solutions would be x equals, and then we'd have negative b, that'd be negative four, plus or minus the square root of b squared is four squared, and then minus four ac, which would be minus four times one times negative three, all over two times a, or two times one. So simplifying, we have x equals, negative four plus or minus the square root of the discriminant's going to be sixteen plus twelve, that's twenty-eight, all over two. Let's continue simplifying on the next slide. The square root of twenty-eight does simplify. Twenty-eight is equal to four times seven. The square root of four is equal to two. So this simplifies to two square root of seven. So we have negative four plus or minus two square root seven all over two. Now be careful simplifying here. We cannot just simplify the four and the two. Let's write this as two separate fractions. We'd have x equals negative four divided by two plus or minus two square root seven divided by two, which gives us negative two plus or minus square root seven. So we have a total of three critical numbers. In order from least to greatest, we would have x equals negative two minus square root seven, and then we'd have x equals zero, and then we'd have x equals negative two plus square root seven. Let's also get our decimal approximation, though, for this critical number and this critical number. Negative two minus square root seven is approximately negative four point six four five eight, and negative two plus square root seven is approximately zero point six four five eight. Now we'll divide the domain of the given function into four separate intervals using the three critical numbers, and then we'll test the sign of the first derivative in each interval. If the first derivative is positive, the function is increasing over that interval, and if the first derivative is negative, the function is decreasing over that interval. Again, because we have three critical numbers and the domain is all real numbers, we'll consider four separate intervals, which I've already set up here in a table. The first interval, is from negative infinity to approximately negative four point six four five eight. I also included the exact value here. The next interval is from negative four point six four five eight to zero. Then we have from zero to point six four five eight, and finally from point six four five eight to infinity. And now we'll select a test value in each interval. And this is why it's often helpful to use the decimal approximations. For this first interval, let's use negative five. Notice negative five is in the interval. For the next interval, let's use negative one. For the next interval, let's use point five or one half. And for this interval, let's use one. Now we're going to evaluate the first derivative at these x values, and we'll do this using the graphing calculator. So if we press y equals, I've already entered the original function in y one and the derivative function in y two. And now we're going to use a table feature to evaluate the first derivative at these test values. Before we do this though, let's check the table set. Let's press second window and make sure ask is highlighted. 
If it's not, just arrow down, highlight ask, and press enter. And now we'll go to the table of values by pressing second graph, and we'll quickly enter our test values. We'll go back up to the top here, and enter negative five, enter, negative one, enter, point five or one half, enter, and finally one, enter. Now remember we're concerned about the sign of the first derivative, which we entered in y2. So it's important to make sure we know where our derivative function is located. Notice at negative five it's positive, at negative one and point five it's negative, and at one it's positive. So the sign of the first derivative is positive here, negative here and here, and positive here. Which means the function is increasing over this interval, decreasing over this interval, decreasing over this interval, and increasing over this interval. Notice how over these two intervals the function is decreasing, and the function is defined at zero, and therefore we can say the function is decreasing from negative 4.6458 all the way to 0.6458. Let's go ahead and record this. The function is increasing from negative infinity to, depending on the directions, we enter the exact value of negative two minus square root seven, or the approximate decimal value given here. Let's just go ahead and use the exact value of negative two minus square root seven, and it's also increasing from negative two plus square root seven to infinity. And we can say it's decreasing from negative two minus square root seven all the way to negative two plus square root seven. And now for the last part, we're asked to determine whether we have a local or relative max or min at the three critical numbers. And our homework system does want us to enter decimal approximations for the critical numbers in order from least to greatest. So if the smallest critical number was negative 4.6458, then zero, and then 0 0.6458. And notice how because the function is increasing over this interval and then decreasing over this interval, at the critical number negative 4.6458, we'd have a high point or a local or relative max. So at x equals negative 4.6458, six, four, five, eight, there is a local or relative max. If we wanted to find this local maximum value, notice how we'd have to evaluate the original function at this decimal approximation or the exact value of negative two minus square root seven. But it doesn't ask us to do this here. Notice the next interval, it's decreasing again, and then here it's increasing. So the critical number x equals zero, it does not change from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing, and therefore there is no local or relative max or min. But notice at zero point six four five eight, the function changes from decreasing to increasing, which means we'd have a low point or a local or relative minimum. So at point six four five eight, there is a local or relative minimum. And let's go ahead and check this graphically. Notice how the function is increasing over this interval from negative infinity to negative four point six four five eight, and then it's decreasing from negative four point six four five eight here all the way to approximately point six four five eight which should be somewhere in here, and then finally the function starts to increase from 0.6458 to infinity. So we do have a relative or local maximum here at negative 4.6458, and we have a relative minimum here, or local minimum at 0.6458. So our graph does verify our work. I hope you found this helpful.